Hello everyone. Today we have a review of this 2022 Toyota Corolla Cross XLE. This is actually a loaner from the Toyota dealership while my dad's Tundra is getting um, diagnosed. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop inside. It does have your typical new Toyota key fob. If I lock it real quick. Um, this does have smart key, so if you just put your hand behind the handle, it will unlock. Then if you press this pad right here, it will lock. It is in this blue exterior color. It's almost silverish blue. And then inside, we have this black color, which is making it incredibly hot in here. As you can see, this car only has 8,000 miles. So, as long as your key's in the um, interior, all you have to do is put your foot on the brake and press the engine start stop button. The 2022 Toyota Corolla Cross comes with Toyota's 2.0-liter Dynamic Force M20A FKS inline 4-cylinder making 169 horsepower at 6600 RPM and 150 pound-feet of torque at 4400 RPM. You can hear that two liter four cylinder come to life. Does have your typical newer style Toyota steering wheel. Parking brakes electronic. And this does have a CVT transmission with manual shiftability. And it does have an actual first launch gear. So we'll go ahead and turn on the automatic lights as well as the hazards. And we'll go ahead and take a look on the outside. I think they really got the styling down on this Corolla Cross. 
I really like how they look. I used to have a compass and this car reminds me a lot of it if the compass was higher quality and just generally um, better put together as well as being more premium. These are 18 inch alloy wheels. Go ahead and go back into the car. Do you get roof racks on top? So I'll go ahead and cut the lights back to auto and we'll turn this on. I'll still keep the AC on because it's really hot outside. But to the left of the steering wheel you do have your turn signal slash yeah, just turn signal and light stock. Down here you do have all your power windows with automatic down and automatic up on the driver's window. Do you have your lock and unlock button? You have your mirror controls and your window locks. Down here you have your automatic high beams, I believe, as well as your trunk release, I think. I don't think that's the adjusting button for like the height. I think that's just the release. And you also have your gauge dimmer on the steering wheel itself, you do have your um, menu buttons. You can just go through all the information on here. You just got a lot of um, menus you can go through. I'm not going to go through all of them because that might take a while. Well, we'll go look at some of the... Oh, you have to hold. Yeah, there's a lot of... A lot of settings. I'll go back to what it was at. As you can see, this car has been averaging 28 miles to the gallon, and it has. Oh, that's why. <laughs> but I guess over the lifetime of the vehicle, it has averaged 28 miles a gallon. But along with that menu dial, you do have your back button, your um, call answer button from when your phone's connected to Bluetooth, your volume controls, and your hands free um, button for voice control. What's the weather? Sorry, could you repeat that? Cancel. I don't really know all the commands on here as just saying that just as an example. Um, I don't think it actually will say the weather unless you're using Android Auto or something. But you do have your, what I assume is your adaptive cruise control, the rest of your cruise control, lane departure, um, warning or assist. Not exactly sure what option this car options this car has since it's just a loaner. But then you have your mode, I don't know what it does, might be like your drive modes. And your skip track, and we'll see. Oh, it's just switching to AF and FM. Shut that off before I get copyrighted. Um, you have your wiper stock. And then, down here, you do have your uh, dual zone climate control. With auto, off button, front defrost, rear defrost, and your mirror right there. Um, eco, heat, and cool. Yes, if you want to save gas, fan speed, air zones, recycle air. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that is. I thought it would stop the air out of this vent, but it still keeps going. So I'm not exactly sure what that does. Someone could enlighten me. Please let me know. Your AC button and your sink button. And all of your temperature, your mode, or your zones, and your fan speed are displayed right here on the screen. On your radio, here's you have your home screen. If it'll focus, there we go. Now that my reflection's out of the way, you do have your audio off. But if you select it, you can choose any of your audio sources that you normally find. AM. Oh. Don't want to do that right now. AM, FM, S, um, Sirius XM, USB. If you have something plugged into the USB, Bluetooth, and you can reorder if you want. Go back to the home. This is your contacts list if your phone's connected. Um, your range, 198 miles, and your fuel economy over the trip, I believe. 
on the menu you do have your audio options on the phone tab you do have your keypad contacts favorites history select device and messages or message I'm not gonna go on the other things because it couldn't reveal personal information but you also have apps which currently only has notifications and Wi-Fi probably because this is a loner and they have it set to only be that projection for whenever a phone is plugged in right here onto the USB info it's just vehicle alert history and it's required in December so I guess you can kind of see when they bought this or not bought this when it was delivered to the dealership. So it looks like it was purchased May of last year or was sent to the dealership May of last year. But in menu, you also have your setup, which is just normal settings Bluetooth, audio, phone, voice. Go back to that main menu. You also have display settings. But if we click audio, it goes back to your sources. And then you have no navigation app, I guess, from the factory. And you have to check the website to get a subscription or something, I bet. Which I'm not a fan of. I just use Android Auto. Skip the just, um, subscription. You have your volume and power. Yeah. Seat, track, phone which just brings you back to the other thing apps which just brings you back to the other app button um, you have tune and scroll you have your heated seats high and low for both your front or your driver's seat and your front passenger seat down here you do have your track control off auto um, start stop off button you have your shifter which has this leather boot in it I don't know if this is leather or urethane on the actual shifter but you do have a button, just press the brake and then press the button to shift into gear. You do have manual shifting on this car. Um, here's your e-brake and then brake hold. Two cup holders, then a very small center console. I don't know what you're going to put in there, maybe a phone. But you do have wireless charging down here, I almost forgot. Up here you do have your sunroof controls, your map lights. Then your dome light control. <clears throat> then your door, or for whenever the door is open. Um, guess it's off? Yeah, there you go. I'll just leave it off because that's what they had it at. You do have your SOS button, which actually has a cover on it. So you don't accidentally press it if you have children. Um, passenger airbag, um, off. I don't know what the two means, but yeah, and then your actual sunroof, which in Texas would just equate to roasting. Your rear view mirror, nothing special about it, it does have auto, auto dimming, which is nice. And yeah, that's about all that's going on up front. Let's check out the other parts of the car. In the front of the Corolla Cross, you do have a glove box. It's relatively big. Bigger than my Compass, but not as big as my Avalon or that other, that older Corolla. You do have storage space in the front two doors. We'll see if the back has storage space. Um, literally, that's it. I don't even think the driver's seat is powered, even though it's an XLE, but we'll come back and check. In the back seat, you have pretty good leg room. This seat isn't all the way back, though. I feel like there probably should be a stopper of some kind, because it goes ridiculously far back. I don't know if that's just normal, but anyways, all the seats in this car are really comfortable. Um, here you have your cup holders and your center armrest where your middle seat is you do have two vents back here which is nice and you have power outlets out here which are down here which i didn't even notice and the caps 
or the covers are still there. So, oh, you also have a cup holder, your power window for back here, your grab handle. No storage on the door though, which is kind of surprising. I guess that's why they put the cup holder there instead. So you can either open it with the button. You can also press and hold the button on the key fob. Just press the trunk button and hold. You have a lot of space back here. I don't know if this is more or less than my compass had. It seems like more, but it's been a very long time since I've owned that car. Um, I don't know what this hump's here for, and it doesn't look like anything like under it. Could be a tire. I'm not really sure. I don't want to take apart this car <laughs> if it's just a loner. Um, but you do have some extra well space on the side. You do have this mat back here. It just covers your cargo from being seen. And then it looks like these seats do fold down, so we'll see how that works when we get to the driver's side rear. You press this button to set what height you want the trunk to go up to, just so you don't hit like your garage wall or something. But the other button on the left just makes it go down. And real quick, I'll just demonstrate if you press the button as well. Now, doesn't really have any stopping mechanism, it seems. It's like someone's arm was here. Nope, that'll just keep going. That kind of hurt. It'll definitely hurt if your head's in the way or something. But, same thing over here, you just don't get a mat pocket, which I'm not gonna touch because there's something gross. But, really easy, all you have to do is pull this lever and you'll see this red tab come out and the seat folds right down. Now it's interesting that this isn't a flat loading floor. That might be why this is here to help that, but huh. This isn't even a hybrid or anything, so it's interesting that it doesn't fold flat. But that about sums up this review of this 2022. Toyota Corolla Cross XLE. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.